beautiful, cold, brisk, wintry day. I pray that all of you have a blessed Thanksgiving, and I want to welcome you all to today's worship service. We do not want to embarrass anybody, but we do like to take a moment and recognize any visitors who would like to be recognized. Do we have any present with us today? Well, if you see a fresh face, you do not know, make sure during the passing of peace you go and introduce yourselves. At this time, I'd like to invite the children forward for children's time. Yeah. 
have the worship service, and following that, hanging of earnings, everybody is welcome.
Thank you. 
Thank you very much. You'll turn out your bulletins for the opening prayer. And you may be seated for this. <clears throat> Let us pray. Holy God, we enter this sacred space and time with expectation. Expectation of your coming. Expectation of hearing you speak to us a word for our lives that is new and renewing. Expectation of being challenged and changed. We lay aside any expectation of being entertained, of being made comfortable, of being served rather than serving others. Your kingdom is here, and you have entrusted to us, your church, the responsibility of exemplifying the love, forgiveness, justice, compassion, and peace that are signs of it. May we embody your kingdom with faithfulness and joy, we pray. Amen.
we have come to our time of joys and concerns. What do we have today on our hearts? I'm sure we have 10,000 reasons to be here, to be thankful and joyful on the music. We've been so blessed this morning with wonderful music from the praise band and from the choir. I know Danny and I are very thankful to be out of the ice and here where you guys can get quite as much ice as Western Kansas. So we're thankful to make it back. I saw two inches of ice on the front of our car. I worry. <laughs> Prayers for the many that are out there still in icy conditions. <laughs> I'm thankful when my nieces come for due day, two days, and I'm thankful when they leave. <laughs> <laughs> I am there. Thankful. 
and the joyful force. Oh my God, what a wonderful week this was. The family and friends and all the fellowship, the good food, and just the time spent to be joyful for everything that we have. Oh my God, we do have so much for so many people around this world who lack even their necessities. And oh my God, we lift them all up to you, especially during this holiday season. We pray for the homeless, those who struggle each and every day just to have food or shelter. We lift up all those that are struggling with health concerns, those who have lost loved ones, Oh my God, there are so many needs in this world, and we lift them all up to you. As now we come forward and we lift up that prayer that your Son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and we live. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. When it's not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Amen. And now, with joy in our hearts, let us offer up our ties and our offerings.
Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is Our Righteousness. This is the Word of God. Now if you turn into the hymnals, number 204, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. We'll sing it twice. Confused by the roaring of the seas 
and love the ways. Jesus foretold the end over 2,000 years ago, and ever since, has been foretold probably not that many times when the end of the world is going to be. Here a few weeks ago, I spoke again about the end of the world. And once again today, on the first Sunday of Advent, it comes up again. Why is this? Does this sound very much like an Advent scripture to you? <coughs> yes, it does. Because as I pointed out in the children's sermon, Advent means coming. So we all need to prepare. Jesus says in the scripture that people will faint from the fear and from foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the power of the heavens will be shaken. Yet, as I spoke about a couple weeks ago, we should not be afraid. Instead, we need to welcome it. We need to be prepared. The end times have been foretold time and time again. They thought about a thousand years ago when the first millennial scare hit, that's going to happen then. And then how many of you remember Y2K? There was so much fear. Fear that the end of the world was going to come through technology of all things. I remember you needed to watch your computers because everything was going to crash. It was not going to turn over to the new millennium. How many of you are still here? <laughs> Last I checked, I was still here. We made it through Y2K. But then, time and time again. How many of you are aware of the fall of the Roman Empire and how many people lost their lives? How many of you have heard about the rise of the Nazi Empire and how many people lost their lives? Or how about Stalin's, Stalin's reign? The list goes on time and time again during these horrible tragedies. Ferocious acts upon the human kind. People have lost their lives. Come and try to get in. They thought, this is the signs the world is going to come to an end. How many of you have read articles or heard on TV that because of what is going on right now with ISIS? This is a sign of the end times. I have heard a ton, ton again, read article after article. But the truth is, it says in the scriptures that no one will know the time. We will not know. Now, Jesus does say that when these things begin to take place, stand up. Raise your hands up because your redemption is drawing near. Again, Advent means coming. So what are we supposed to do? Are we to sit and twiddle our thumbs and do nothing? No. We are to be ready. One of my favorite books out there is 30 Days to Live. And the whole book talks about what if you had 30 days to live. What would you do? But a lot comes the question, if all of you knew that the end of the world was going to happen tomorrow morning, what would you do? Would you sit around and do nothing? Or would you love people? Would you help people? Would you fill something that's on your bucket list? Martin Luther was once asked, what are you supposed to do if you think the world is going to fall down around you? He asked this question. He was asked. And he thought about it. And he said, well, if I knew that the world was going to come to an end tomorrow morning, I would go out 
not only plant, a tree. He was asked to go deeper into detail, and he said, well, the truth is that the world would probably not come to an end tomorrow. But if it did come to an end, and Jesus came, I could point out, said, say, I planted a tree. I was taking care of this world and caring for the earth. But I was preparing for this world to continue. There will be signs for anyone to see. You see, in our scripture lesson today, Jesus told the parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. We do have a lot of signs around us that points that the end of the world may happen at some point. But the truth is that the kingdom is near. The kingdom is already near at hand. All you have to do is pray and reach out for it and live in that kingdom. Instead of reaching and expecting something to come, we need to live as though it has already come. Passages like this remind us that we don't have to forever decide what we think about the Jesus of Nazareth. Instead, it is a time to decide and live in what is now. What is going on now? A passage just like this gospel reading this morning reminds us that there is radical options before us. And those radical options are we can either accept the kingdom or we can reject the kingdom. Either way, the kingdom of God is near. And if we accept God, we enter that kingdom here and now. If we reject God, then we are still standing by and waiting and watching. So as we come together for the start of the Advent, let us not just anticipate the coming of Christ. Let's live in that kingdom here and now. Let's live in that kingdom today. Let us pray. Oh, my gracious God, as we come together this day and we anticipate your coming, we know that you and Spirit are among us. Help us to live as though you are here with us, answering your call, following your direction, and enjoying your kingdom on earth. Amen. The sermon today actually kind of goes really well with uh, what we finished with in our men's Bible study of uh, Dr. David Jeremiah. Man, I mean, this is perfect. And it got me to thinking about uh, the Christmas song, Joy to the World. And what we learned, if you look in the verses, Joy to the World is actually about the coming of Christ, coming back again. You just look at the third and fourth verses. No more let sins and sorrows grow, no thorn thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the first is found. And he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. So next time you sing Joy of the World, maybe not think of it as a Christmas song. Think of that. That's when he comes back for the final time. Come, thou long expected Jesus, would you please stand as we sing our closing hymn, number 196.
As you go from here, may the Lord bless you, guide you, and lead you. May you live in this kingdom. And may the food that we are about to partake of nourish our bodies as Christ nourishes our souls. Amen. Amen.